Welcome to Good Life U. Uh, this is episode seven, which is getting up there, and our series on really direct support, stability, and labor. And it couldn't be a better time because we're all having, you know, our own labor crisis uh, uh, that we thought was bad before the pandemic, and then we thought it was really bad in the pandemic, and then we realize as that is changing and we're starting to re-engage our lives it's actually gotten worse. And so that's been a big challenge, but welcome to the episode. Um, this one is on lifestyle professional direct support positions. And uh, you'll learn a little bit about that and it's layered on top of all of our other stuff that we do. And that actually reminds me to say something. And that is that this is a series and the concept of a series is that things have order which mean that this is seven and there's been six others. And I would tell you, it'd be great if you could catch up and go back and listen to some of the others because they build on each other because we're trying to use each session on its own so that we don't you know, have them longer than is needed and so that people can kind of build and build and build and build. So I hope you love this one, but I also suggest let's go back and look at some of the others if you haven't seen them. Which also leads me to say these are all available as podcasts exactly where you get them. So please go there and get them and follow us. And, you know, we're very grateful for all the people that are doing that. So thank you. So this session is about our lifestyle positions. And I call, uh, and, and really this will be the next two sessions. Uh, if I've got it estimated right, uh, we call them lifestyle positions because it, it is, it's direct support professional positions this, that, that are designed in a way that actually you join the lives of people with intellectual disabilities. So it's, it's a lifestyle. You know, there, there's jobs and then there's lifestyles. And these positions are a lifestyle. Uh, and, and, and the positions I'm going to talk about today are three positions that are employee positions. And in the next episode, I'm going to talk about our shared living model, uh, which we, uh, we are moving, uh, you progress to. Uh, and so that'll be the next session. So, but all four of them together are all of our lifestyle positions. Um, so these particular positions, there's, there's three of them we're going to talk about today. The professional roommates, professional families, and professional neighbors. And then next week is our shared living version that we call extended professional families. The, the first one I want to talk about uh, is the professional roommate. Now, I do want to tell you all these positions that we're going to talk about, all the ones I just mentioned, they are really intended to work with other staffing models. So they don't stand on their own. This is what we work in combination. I think you'll see that as we go, go through this. Professional roommates are DSP or direct support professional employees that work extended shifts that are at least 24 hours, generally across two or three days. So they work 24 hour periods for probably three, two to three days in a row, usually three days in a row. Uh, and they sleep on the premises. So it, they don't live in, it's a shift, a three day shift uh, and it's called a professional roommate. And this is a, a process or, or a, a position that really is designed to join in the life of somebody for an extended period of time. Uh, and we'll talk about uh, that. So basically, two or three professional roommates work across a week to deliver care to a home, a single home, that might have two or three clients, a certain number of clients in a home. They, they stay in an additional bedroom that's associated with that home, um, and they work as a team. Uh, they normally work about 16-hour days, so you know we're going to kind of go through the little, a little bit specific about their work. They work about 16-hour days, and, 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 and they sleep overnight, and, and they, so they work 16 hours a day when not sleeping. Uh, al although it's possible that they might have a few hours of relief through the day, and sometimes this relief is provided by a staff person, a, a direct shift staff, who might support a collection of these homes where they may give 
move across these homes and provide structured relief to these professionals that, that, that actually deliver extended care. So they also, um, each professional roommate will sleep uh, eight hours a night. So we allocate eight hours of sleep time. And under certain conditions that the Department of Labor makes very clear, and we would you know, provide that reference to you, uh, it can be excluded from time worked. So they can actually sleep, but you're not pay for that time, uh, as long as they're not called to duty. But of course, if they're called to duty, then you need, we need to pay them, and, and we do. Um, and depending on the night needs of the person served, somebody, uh, sometimes a mobile uh, night staff support uh, might work again across home. So at night, even though they're sleeping in there, they're there to provide support. If that support ends up being longer than they anticipated, somebody is not going back to bed or you're not able to get somebody back to bed, we have usually a mobile night staff that would go provide more extended support so that that person can go back to sleep. And again, that night person would, would support multiple homes. So that's how that works. Depending on the, the, the night needs of the person, Sometimes uh, that person will support m multiple homes, but sometimes we don't need to do that because it's so infrequent that it's fine for the, the professional roommate you know, to do that. And at Good Life, professional roommates work in homes supported by iLink Technologies. Now in other sections, we've talked about iLink, and in other series, we've talked about iLink, but iLink basically will provide remote support at night as well as through other parts of the day but if the need be that somebody needs to be awake and deployed, then Nightlink's always, uh, iLink's always there to notice that somebody has gotten up and will deploy the professional roommate so that they can provide help. So we don't rely on the professional roommate to notice that they need to get up because otherwise they might sleep through it, uh, the, the need. But but they are a, what I call a deployable asset. They are somebody there to be deployed. Um, and if that's too much for that person to do, then we have a roving night person that would, would come in and provide relief so that person can go back to bed, if that makes sense. One last thing, just to kind of little, uh, finish this one little part up, is that they, they, they may be paid hourly. Um, and sometimes, if you heard episode five, they might receive premium pay uh, for weekends, uh, which pay them a little extra for working on a weekend. And you can go back to episode five to learn more about that. And sometimes uh, they're paid what we call salary, salary but not exempt. And this is a very precise payment method that's beyond what we can talk about today, but it will be talked about in a future episode where we really go into that type of compensation system. So we'll reserve that for later, but it's a very uh, affordable way to provide care. Uh, and especially it's an affordable way on how we handle overtime that you'll learn about, uh, about later. So what's the benefits of the professional roommate for the, for the employee? The truth is, you know, in, in when you're doing a three day shift, you only make one trip to work at the beginning of the three days and you leave at the end of the three days. So in terms of commuting and transportation, people who are challenged by that, which as you know, a lot of our industry is, um, that's a really, really attractive process. Secondly, they are paid a higher waking rate than traditional direct support staff because we're saving money on night support. They can come in, they can work 16 hours a day. So another thing is in three days, they're generally providing about 48 hours to 50 hours of support. But keep in mind that some of that support's in the, in the late evening where it's really very low, um, you know, uh, it, think of this as your own home. In your own home, there's active times and there's down times, right? And that's certainly true when you're joining the life of a person with disability. They're just like us. They have times that they're active and more busy, and there's times that we're having downtime. And usually in our world, the evening and later evening is that. And so they're getting paid for 16 hours of support a day. 
they're sleeping eight, and we're, the 16 hours of support we're paying for them is a higher rate. So in three days, they're making for, uh, they're they're making more money per hour, and they're earning 48 to 50 hours of support a week. And I say to 50 because there could be a little bit at night that they may have to do. So it may be that, right? And so this is a great position for them. They're they're actually able to, if you if you've heard my other sessions. 40% of all direct support have a second job. A lot of direct support work extra, you know, and this is a way where we can give them that, that extra work, but they're still able to do it in three days, which means they have four days off. So you're having a wonderful balanced lifestyle. You're making it so that people don't have to come to work, you know, but one trip to work. Uh, they can get a lot of uh, where our front back half staffing patterns we talked about in a previous episode usually targets about 36 hours in three days. This is giving 48, even 50 hours in that same time period at a higher rate of pay because we're not paying for overnight. Uh, so we're able to generate a very, very good salary, but it's still affordable because we're because of how we do it. So it's a great option, and so two, three usually uh, people can do this. And when I say three, you got the front half and the back half kind of in the same way we've done before, a Sunday and Monday and Tuesday and say a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and say the Wednesday could be a swing day that another professional neighbor is going across a couple of homes to do, right? And so in that way, we are able to, to deliver care with three people, right? And so uh, we know that the number of, of, as the number of people involved in care goes down, the quality of the care goes up and the relationships are greater, you know, everything's better. So this is a really balanced lifestyle for people. Not everybody can do it, but for the people who choose to do this, it really is moving from a, of a shift mentality to a lifestyle mentality. It, it really can develop deeper relationships and more meaningful results because you're working with three people for extended periods of time. And so, many, so few people are doing it. Your team is very well versed with each other and you're really able to, to do something special. So if I can say for the providers, uh, there's the benefits, uh, you know, looking at from their viewpoint, you know, it, it's affordable night support, right? That's the number one thing. And accountable night support when you involve iLink technologies or a, a remote support strategy. It's a great option for day services without walls. What I mean there is if, we're, if you're providing day services and they're not going to traditional day services, you know, you're actually delivering 24 hours of support you can do that in these arrangements and it's wonderful. So you get up, you get ready, you go do community inclusion, you know, uh, things directly from the home using, again, one person that's in charge of their day. There's no transitions across the day. There's no pass offs. You are working, uh, you know, with the people who support to get a life for them and to deliver you know, enriching schedules, and that can bypass day services. And of course, we all know that's where the world's going, is day services without walls and more community directed. Uh, that And by the way, this has another savings. In a traditional day services approach, there's residential and day, and there's usually a, a, a two hour overlap. The day services is eight hours, and you got the residential, and there's usually a pretty significant overlap of staffing. That's a pro, and you're only bill, you're only you're normally able to bill for six hours for a day service. That's common, and so you're actually delivering eight hours of support, but you're only getting six hours of revenue. You guys know what I mean by that. And so what th this does is it eliminates all that needless overlap, and that too saves money that you can turn in to pay for people. So uh, that's a big deal. Uh, so and you and the agency can afford to pay a higher you know waking rate. Uh, most uh, professional roommates are recruited from DSP positions or from direct support positions. Uh, so so you really, you're not recruiting these as much from the outside. But if you do, you can actually recruit people from farther distances. So you may, you know, direct support people who are, uh, who are live far away or when you're marketing for new employees, which is, as you know, really hard to do, you can target rural communities or 
you know, places that are a little farther away because they're only coming to work once. And, and they're able to get back, and so they have, you know, four days after that. Um, so uh, those are the advantages for the pr provider for that. So now that, that covers um, uh, professional roommates. Now we're going to move on to the second one. And the second one, I'm going to really do the second and the third one together and then just tell you the, the, the additional things. The, the next two are the professional families and professional neighbors. Professional families... I traditionally live in a home. So if you kind of look at this at a high level, uh, professional roommates live in a home, but it's in the client home. Professional families permanently live in the home. And, and that's sort of, that's another step towards a lifestyle. You know, one's kind of getting your toe in the water and this one's diving in a little deeper, but you're still an employee. You still have a schedule. You still have time off. So it, it's not fully immersing, you're, but you're moving more and more to, towards a lifestyle. So a professional family uh, lives in a home with two to four persons that they support usually uh, and typically live in separate but connected living quarters. So most often this might be like a duplex where you have a living quarters here and a living quarters there. They're attached. We have to sometimes have pass-through doors and other kinds of things that we we, we do so that, you know, they can support it. But I've seen this also many times in a multi-level house where there's living quarters, say, downstairs, uh, and they support, you know, the people who live upstairs. You have the walkout kinds of arrangements. So there's different kinds of home arrangements that lend itself to separate quarters for family, you know, uh, 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 professional families, right? So that's kind of how it's configured. Um, professional families might be uh, one person, or it could be a married couple, or it could be a non-traditional couple. It can be a family with and without children. It can be a mom and a daughter of adult age that are both uh, involved in this. At least one member of this family is actually providing support, but sometimes multiple members of this family provide support. Sometimes all the support comes from this one family who might work different you know, shifts or different time periods or flexibly work with each other to provide care. So it, it, it is a, a wonderful model for that gets that next level um, uh, of, of support for somebody, it, but, but it still keeps separate. You've got separate quarters, you've got schedules, you got some time off, so you're, you're more in it, but not completely. This is their primary residence. This is where they live. And I'll, that's important when we get down to some of the, the benefits of this. Professional neighbors are similar in almost every respect to what I just described, except prof professional neighbors live near often multiple homes, and they may support multiple people. Okay, multiple people across a few or multiple homes. Professional neighbors, though, they live there permanently, just like the family. Uh, the, the professional family, uh, they live in pr close proximity to these homes. They provide support that ebbs and flows around their needs. They work schedules. They have time on, time off, and time on call. Both professional families and professional neighbors are responsible for overnight on-demand needs. They both, both of them, uh, use iLink or something similar to that in our program is iLink, which monitors and supports the home remotely and then would deploy the family teachers or, or the family, uh, the professional family or the professional neighbors at night so that they won't need to know that somebody needs help. They just need to be deployable. And many of these also work with a mobile night person who is deployed across homes when the up at night support is more than just occasional or it's more than just a, 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 uh, a short need. Uh, the, the mobile support is there for, for longer purposes. Sometimes what you'll see is the professional family or the professional neighbor immediately providing support and then being relieved by the mobile support uh, who, who uh, require, you know, who can give more time to it. Both the professional families and the professional neighbors often have flex hours. And they can't, because they're living there continuously, they work a schedule, but they have flex hours that they may use for 
some management purposes. So you're starting to build in this, these positions, some management of that home or management of, the, of a, a group of homes. If you have additional direct support professionals working shifts to support them, they supervise those positions. So there's sort of a supervisor manager, but also deliver care and support. So the benefits for the professional family and professional neighbor would include uh, the, the big one is, 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 you know, the housing, right? So professional families and professional neighbors basically are provided housing as a, uh, for their job. So, so they have a home that, and this is their primary residence. So they don't have any housing costs. And, and because it's a requirement of the job that they live there, then it's non-taxable as well. And that's really an important. So you're able to pay a good salary, um, ex not exempt salary, but you're also able to give a housing benefit for the, because they have to be on site and it's their primary resident and that means it's non-taxable. An interesting thing that again we'll be talking about later, but it, it, for people who actually live in, this would be the professional families, not the neighbors but people who actually are considered live-ins, um, they actually can be paid, um, uh, even their compensation can be paid tax-free. Now, there's some rules around this, but they're pretty straightforward. Uh, this is something that the IRS allowed uh, in, in, in 2016, and there's a whole thing that we, you know, there's way beyond what I can do today to tell you that, but if you're trying to leverage funding for people, tax-free benefits are incredibly important because what that means is that they're able to keep more of the money that you pay them, right? So this is another way uh, of leveraging money in very creative ways, but allowed uh, for, uh, for people to deliver care. And what it does is every step up that ladder rung, you're paying people more, but in return for that, they're joining the lives more, which then improves care. So. No travel costs to and from work, of course, because they live there, right? And, and uh, they do have designated time of work and time off, and they have flex time, which they like very much. For the provider, you know, it's, there's some of the benefits are similar in that, in that they, they, they're able to provide uh, very, very good night and affordable night support, right? And that's, that's where you save money. But there's another thing, too. You're able to provide management and administrative support for a smaller group of homes because they're, you're only having them do a percentage of their time for those activities. What that does do is that it reduces your overall management costs and, and you, your managers overseeing them can take on many, many more caseloads because they too, they are providing some of the management duties. That also builds their capacity because the people may leave this position and go to other roles and, and so they're learning how to be better managers along the way. Um, another big issue with this, when you live on site, you can do something that you can't pay direct support staff to do, and that is work split shifts. What happens is that, you, as you know, sometimes people go to traditional day services around nine and they come back at three, and maybe they go to somebody else's day services. So like, what do you do with the staff between those periods of time? It's an awkward gap, but with live-in, uh, professional families or with professional neighbors, they can work in the morning because they live there. They can take time off today the day and work in the early afternoon and early evening. Uh, and that's per completely organic from them. And it really fits their lifestyle, especially if they have kids and they have other things that they, they want to do with their time. It, it allows that flexibility. So not everybody works at that schedule, but it's a possible schedule. And it's done very... Um, efficiently by that type of position, if that makes sense. And again, remember, all of these positions are not intended to be on their own. They work with other kinds of positions that you've heard about, you know, in some of our past presentations and stuff. Big deal here is there's far fewer people involved in care and they have far, and here's a big deal, they have far less turnover. These positions now, professional neighbors and, and professional families, are now three to 800% less turnover than direct support staff. Huge, I mean, when you look at the number of different people involved in care, turnover 
these sort of things. This is such a huge issue. That saves money that can be redirected to services, and it just delivers better care. Um, they can be paid hourly, um, uh, but we don't do that. Uh, we usually do the salary, but not exempt again. We'll talk about that later. So my summary is the professional roommates, families, and neighbors are all lifestyle roles uh, and can cost effectively and, and, you know, at the highest level, develop deep personal relationships with those that they serve because they join up the lives. It provides such consistent care across time because these guys, you know, are so vested because of the time they spend and because they live there. Also, they become highly vested in the community and the neighborhood that they're in because they live there. And what that means is it opens up some resources for people um, the, and opportunities for clients and the people that all the people that you serve that, that wouldn't be there if you didn't have somebody, you know, like meeting neighbors and, and getting other people involved and maybe volunteering and mentoring and, and or just being a buffer when the t from time to time where a, a person that you serve may be disruptive or cause challenges, that relationship that that professional family or neighbor has with the community will make it so that people will be more accepting of all of those kinds of things. Um, this is, again, a strategic set of positions that is meant to go with others to deliver care. And, and we, we always kind of embed these in a neighborhood support strategy, and that, you've heard a little bit of that in the past. But these can be done in various combinations to provide support in a neighborhood. And we'll go, we have gone over that. We'll go over that again in future episodes. Um, but basically, uh, the, the, these are also meant to work with iLink. So it's important uh, that if you're really great getting the cost effectiveness of this model and making it what all it can be, that iLink or something like iLink is used so that you can allow people to sleep at night and save money and redirect those savings to not only pay but higher ratios of care through, through the day, which is where you really need them, right? Um, and, and sort of lastly, the, um, these are all full-time, well-compensated positions that serve as a career ladder for direct support positions. So direct support positions become these positions. And finally, these positions become shared living positions or our extended family positions, which then helps even further this career ladder, but also wonderful opportunities of people who serve. And that, my friends, is what we're going to go into next time. What we're going to learn about next time is, it, is our extended family program and that's where people be, live become shared living providers and they lifestyles are completely joined up and I think you're going to enjoy that and wait to hear some of the, the systems and way that benefits people and how that fits into the overall strategy for every provider that should have that a part of their staffing portfolio so with that being said Welcome to, uh, to episode seven, and we look forward to the next one. You get these right where you get them, at your pod stores, wherever that is, and we look forward to it.